Hello, my name is Brett Ellis. I'm a professor here at the University of Maine in Mechanical Engineering Technology. Like most professors here inside of Mechanical Engineering Technology, I have worked in industry prior to coming here. So it's one thing that distinguishes the program. We are working professionals that have come to teach after working in industry. So one of the classes that I teach is material science and engineering, where we understand and start to discover how materials behave. And we understand this because the analogy is like cooking. If you happen to cook a pizza in a microwave, it's going to taste far different than if you cook a pizza inside of an oven or a brick, or inside of a brick oven. So the challenge is, how do we make materials that look the same behave differently and therefore perform differently after the manufacturing process? And this lab that we have today, inside of Barrows 22, is how we start understanding and characterizing materials. So this lab is a typical third or fourth year class, and we have a lecture portion and we do the lab portion. And inside the lab portion, we start testing out theories that we learned in class, and we understand that they're true or how maybe they don't quite behave as we expect them to. In this lab, we break it down. Students work in teams of three or four per team, and they do hands-on experimentation, and they do such things as Sharpie impact testing over here. The pendulum swings, and we learn about changing potential energy to kinetic energy, and therefore having the material dissipate that energy at different temperatures. This is a really important application. If anyone recalls uh, their history books, in, in, in World War II, the Liberty ships were started to sink, and the problem was that the metal behaved in a brittle fashion in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. So in this lab, students will test metal at cold conditions inside this freezer, and they'll also test material or material specimens at elevated temperatures inside of a furnace, and they'll test them in the Sharpie impact test room, learn about a brittle to ductile transition temperature. Some of our next characterization equipment, we have a Brunel hardness tester. It's very important to learn about hardness. Hardness is a proxy for strength of materials. And so this is something that we can do on any type of specimen, whereas if we understand the tensile or a, a tensile strength properties, it takes a special specimen and we can't always test those. So it's very important in the world of manufacturing to understand how materials behave, and this is one way to do it. In our next lab station, this is possibly one of the most fun lab stations, we go through and do heat treating. So this is a high temperature furnace. What we'll do, it's not on right now, so it's perfectly safe. Normally I'd be wearing gloves. But inside this furnace, it gets extremely hot to the point that we austenitize metal and it changes from a, changes the crystal uh, lattice orientation. So instead of a BCC body center cubic, it becomes a face center cubic. And at that point, <clears throat> students, students will do this. They'll get tongs, they'll reach in, grab the hot metal, come over into the quench tank and quench it and understand and then test it in the following week how materials change as you change the processing conditions. So just like pizza, how we do something changes the results that we get. Over here, we have a hardness testing machine, so it's a Rockwell hardness testing machine. Students will test their specimens, and students will do a variety of other tests, such as Leap's hardness test and other hands-on experiments. Hello. So in the Sharpie impact tester, what we're trying to do is understand the influence of temperature on how a material breaks. So we take a specimen like this, and you'll notice there's a little notch in that specimen. And in that notch, we put it on the back side of this impact machine. It's going to come in, and that notch creates a stress concentration, and that's going to be what helps break the material. So let's get ready to do our experiment. We'll put on our safety glasses first, and we'll get the machine prepared. And now we'll use our tongs to place the specimen into machine to the chamber. And we'll release. Let's see, we've got our dial up to the right position. Okay, so we break the machine, make sure it's safe to reach in, grab our specimens, and then, and this is where the 
the neat part is we start seeing these fracture surfaces and I'll put them on the table. And what we can see is that how the energy is dissipated and how the fracture surface looks tells us a lot about the material and how it failed. So one of the reasons this class is very important is that materials drive innovation and what's actually done in manufacturing. And it turns out that materials are so important that they actually name the ages. If you recall back in history, you have the Stone Age, the Iron Age, the Bronze Age. And the materials that were available at that time actually defined the society. We currently live in the Silicon Age, where cell phones, we're able to talk on our phones, we're able to send data, we're able to work remotely, which is extremely important. And it's only available because of these new material systems. You can even think in terms of aerospace. Uh, planes today, they rely upon composite materials that are lighter and stronger. Therefore, they can save fuel and reduce greenhouse gases. We need jet turbines that can run really high temperatures, and that's very much a material science problem. How do you create materials and how do you process materials such that we can get higher performing engines, we can get, get, we can get cars that have higher or greater fuel economy. So material science impacts our life in ways that go far beyond what we typically think of. Hello. And welcome to the North Engineering Annex, home of Mechanical Engineering Technologies Machining Lab. It's a brand new building. The building just opened up in January 2020, and we're really excited about this space. It's the home of our machine tool lab, as you can see. It's quite a large space, one of the larger spaces in all of New England for machining. And inside this building, we teach four labs. Four labs. One of the most exciting ones is our freshman lab. So your first year, second semester, you'll be machining a project, and the project is, is a uh, pneumatic steam engine. That steam engine is designed in your first semester, and after your first semester, what you do is you come in here in your second semester and you build the machine engine itself, or the, you build the pneumatic engine itself. It's really exciting. You get together in teams of four or five students a team, and you all work together to build this engine. And at the end of the semester, you make it work, and you compete with the other teams to see who can get the fastest speed. The other classes that are taught in here, there is a class in your junior year that's taught inside this space. And that class in junior year is you build a vice that you had designed the previous semester. So you have to design your own vise, and then afterwards you build that vise in this very classroom. And there's one thing that all engineers should have to do, and that is engineers should have to build or be able to manufacture the things that they've had designed. And that's one of the exciting things about mechanical engineering technology. We really go between design and application, and that design and application becomes a really exciting part for practicing engineers. So we have the, the steam engine class your first year. We have the VAT vice class in your third year. And also in your third year, you'll come in here and you'll see at the far end of the room, they're kind of covered up, we'll walk and get a closer view, but we have two vertical CNC mills and there's a CNC lathe. And so in your third year, you'll learn about doing G-code, programming G-code, and learning how CNC machines work. And there's also a technical elective taught in this class where you can learn and do CNC projects where you get to design your own project and manufacture that project via CNC machining. Very exciting work. So let's take a walk through and see what we have. So there are, inside this space, we have roughly 10 vertical mills, hand mills, and they're done by hand so the students get the feel and it really emphasizes the hands-on engineering aspects of what's taking place. You will see we've got new equipment coming in. So in addition to the new building here, we have new equipment coming in. The other exciting thing is that this particular space, when the new engineering building opens up, this whole machine tool lab for mechanical engineering technology will transfer to the new engineering building. And we're gonna be part of the, of the central hub of engineering for University of Maine for years to come. So let's keep walking through. So more machining that's taking place. And we have our laves. Uh, there's eight laves in this space. This is our newest lathe that's come in. You'll see that we still are getting equipment and we're making it put in place to give the best educational opportunities to students. One thing you'll also know, no, notice about this shop, Joel Anderson, who's the instructor, he's a fabulous instructor. He's been doing it for decades. 
he likes to clean shop. <clears throat> so we need to clean our rooms and we need to clean our shops when we're done with our work. So let's go up and look at the CNC machines. Right now, the CNC machines are a little bit covered by the whiteboards because this space, in addition to a teaching lab, it's also with some teaching, so it's really emphasized the hands-on type of teaching. But we have our CNC mills up here and our CNC lathe is on the far left. Here we have a, one of the example pneumatic engines. <coughs> and so what you can tell is inside of here, there is a, there's a piston and there's a slider that takes place in here and this piston in the back drives the shaft, which then turns the flywheel. So it behaves as such. And like I said, this is a project that's completed by first year students in group teams of four or five students per team. So we're gonna see if we can get this to go. Give it a little. So that was that was running a little bit slower than a running competition, but it's a good example of how they spent. So what we have here is one of, vice, one of the vices that a student has built. So the student designed this vice themselves in their sophomore year, and they drew it in CAD. And then in their third year, inside this very North Engineering Annex Machine Tool Lab uh, lab class, they, designed, they built the vice. And so they had to build all the vice pieces and make sure that it was operating smoothly and go through and figure out all the tolerancing to make a vice like this work. It really is an exciting class and it's a way that engineers learn by hands-on learning. Hello, now we're in Boardman 118, which is a lab for instrumentation and mechanics. There are multiple labs taught in this class, including there's the second, the second year uh, sophomore lab, and there's also technical electives that are taught in this lab, including plastics manufacturing and experimental mechanics. One of the hallmarks of the MET program is how quickly students begin working with engineering classes. So from your very first day, you will start off in engineering classes and you'll be doing hands-on learning inside those classes. Uh, in the first year, that consists of a MET 100 where you're going through and the class culminates with a bike frame design and test and another course is dealing with designing the steam engine which is later built in the second semester inside of MET 107 in the machining lab. Another important part of the program is that we incorporate lab activities even into non-lab classes. For example, in a sophomore strength and materials lab or set of strength and materials, even though it's not a lab class, students will go through and design, analyze, manufacture, and test 3D printed beams. And so they'll take a beam, they're given a series of constraints, and so it has to be, in this case it was six inches long by one inch wide by one inch tall, and no more than 45 grams, and they had to figure out how to design the strongest beam possible. So they could change cross section, they could change a lot of features and try to figure out how to get the best beam that they possibly could. What's different about MET, Mechanical Engineering Technology, is that we will go through and we'll test these and we'll test these in this lab. We'll walk over to see the load frame. And this load frame, we'll put in a three-point bending fixture, which is not here right now, but we're able to test and get real data for these and get actual data that students can go through and analyze and see how their test actually came out. This particular lab was funded by a $100,000 gift from Pratt & Whitney and it has all kinds of unique features so we can do we can do ten, we can do load frame testing so compressive and tensile there's all kinds of instrumentation we can set up strain gauges and monitor equipment uh, monitor pieces of it, monitor hardware we can also work with uh, all kinds of metrology and sensors and other technology so pressure gauges and the like it becomes a fascinating students for really to figure out how engineering applies to real-life applications. So in addition to having first, first day classes that are involved with engineering inside the program, inside the first year, what we also have is a suite of technical electives and capstone. In your capstone project, you'll go through and you'll apply these, you'll apply the concepts in a very broad spectrum of 
projects. We've had projects involving autonomous vehicles. We've had projects involving the restoration of a roughly century old organ. We've had projects involving additive manufacturing, uh, projects working with major manufacturers in the area trying to help them automate equipment. So a lot of exciting work is done inside of Capstone. In addition to Capstone, we have a whole set or whole portfolio of, cap, of technical electives. These technical electives include classes such as plastics manufacturing, additive manufacturing, CNC programming, vibrations, experimental mechanics, fuel cells. And so as you get further along in the program, you're allowed to continue to grow and work in areas that are of interest to you. We've had students also complete minors and minors, a very common minor is a minor in business. And inside a business, you can go through, it's a nice combination because engineers, we deal, with, we deal with science, math, and money in the sense of resource allocation. So it's good to have the business background. We can also look at minors in mathematics or renewable energy. And so there's a whole set of minors that can sit, that can suit whatever program you're interested in exploring and learning and developing you into that career that you seek after graduation.